Hey everyone, my name is George and welcome back to Value Assets. Today, we're going to be talking not so much about investing, but saving. Because you, you need to save your money before you be able to invest. If you don't have any savings, then you're not going to be able to invest in money. Now, saving is one of those things where it's kind of, it, it, can, it can be pretty tough depending on your circumstances. And a lot of the times, someone can offer you a framework for how to save your money, like, you know, put X amount of money onto this account, that account. However, if you don't have a compelling reason why you're saving your money, then it can be very, very easy for you to get lost into the process and not keep up with the program, okay? And that's what we're gonna be talking about today to start you off with. And then we'll um, go over the framework and how you'll be able to um, and, and I'll show you how I go about saving my money and then that could be a way that you can apply that to your savings also. But before we get started or anything, I do want to talk about why you want to save your money. And one thing I would suggest is for you to figure that out and grab a notebook, grab a piece of paper and grab a pen and write down the reasons why you want to save your money. So it can be anything, okay? So you want to save up so... You know, if you don't have a, uh, a property, you want to save up to buy a house, you want to save up for a holiday, you want to save up to eventually, you know, invest in the stock market, whatever it is, write down your reasons why for doing it. And then also, you write down your pros and cons for saving, okay? So your pros could be, it could be anything, okay? So in a year from now, you'll be glad to have saved your money because you'll have, you know, X amount of money depending on how much you earn and how much you decide to save by you know, next year, the year after. And also the cons of saving money. So the cons is I won't be able to, I don't know, drink as many beers as Friday night or whatever it is that you decide to spend your money on. So you wanna, you wanna really have a compelling reason why. And then you also wanna write down your pros and cons. So that means if you ever get you know lost in the process you would be able to you know re I'll grab that list at any time leave it in your bedroom and that will help you stay on track and so that's that's really really important and that's one thing that's really really helped me because you know I've if, if I whenever I didn't have that I'd always be like oh you know what I'll mm, I've got some money in my you know savings account and I want to go and you know switch that over to you know my everyday account and then I'll be able to you know, go shopping, get myself some new shoes or whatever it is that I wanted to get. So once I figured out why it is um, that I wanted to save, it became so much more easier. And one thing I did learn in that process is something called, uh, I like to call it delayed gratification. And usually it's, um, think back of anything that satisfies you right now, but has... A consequence later on so you can think of say if you choose to spend your money right now in a week from now in a couple of weeks from now especially on something that you didn't really need to get or you definitely could have held back in a month from now would you feel glad that you had spent your money or would you feel like mm, I probably should have should have saved it because um, a you a month from now would be thinking well I definitely would have been better off haven't saved that money. And I like to also use the analogy of, let's say if someone wanted to lose weight or go onto a gym program, anything that gives you um, instant satisfaction, like say for example, if I want to go and eat something that's got a lot of carbs and you know, very fattening food, I will feel satisfied right now. But if I was on a plan to, you know, say lose some weight or whatever it is, then I will end up feeling bad about it later on. And that's why it's good to as well to have the kind of that good relationship with delayed gratification and realize that anything that, like any short-term sacrifices that you make today, you'll be better off the next day, the week after, and a year later from now, you'll feel glad that you've made those sacrifices today. And you can even look back to things that you've done last year or a couple of years ago. Like let's say for example, if you have a full-time job, but you live pay to the paycheck because you don't necessarily save your money, then think back and say, think back to yourself and say, okay, well, if I would have started saving two years ago, 
how much more like how much more better off would you have been today? So that's number one, and that's one thing um I definitely think about and definitely write down the reasons why and the pros and cons. And the second point I want to make into now is kind of like the framework of how I go about it and that, that's just me sharing with you how I go about saving money. I'm not saying you you know you have to do it that way. You can go about it however it is you like to do, um, to do it. Um, it's very it can be different depending on your circumstances as well. So, let's say if you earn you know one thousand dollars a week and you take home a thousand dollars a week, I like to make four different accounts. Okay, so number one, four different savings accounts. And you can do that with, you know, um, a bank of your choice, whatever, depending on what country you're in. Um, everyone will have a different um, holdings account, but um, whichever one. And number one will be your, you know, your account for your expenses, okay? So that will usually be 60% of my earnings. So if it's $1,000, I'll put $600 on to my daily expenses. And those are things that can be, um, you know, your utility bills in, in the house, you know, your mortgage, whatever it is you have to pay, your your petrol, your phone bill, whatever it is, put that on um, onto your daily expenses and whatever you have left over, save that, okay? And let that build up over time just in case of an emergency. So, you know, if you get into a car accident or whatever and you have to go pay an insurance premium, that will definitely be a good idea. So definitely be, um, you know, strict with, with that and keep doing that. The next part is, I would put 20%, so an extra $200, onto my long-term savings, okay? So, long-term savings could be if you, you know, if you want to save up for a property, you can um, do that. That And that money does not get touched at all. And that's, and that's the key. This is why it's very, very important to go back to your why as well, because it's easy for me to give you the, the you know, framework or to follow a set of rules as to how you set your, um, onto how you save your money, but it's more of a discipline, okay? And for you to be able to stick to it week over week, you need to figure out why it is that you want to do it and think of, you know, think of yourself in a year from now or five years from now and how you would really be grateful that you've made those choices today, okay? So that's, um, that's the second thing put say 20% onto your long-term savings. The third thing would be put 10% onto your short-term savings account, okay? Now these can be things like if you wanna save up for anything within the next six months or a year. So let's say you wanna buy yourself a new car or you want to go on a holiday, things along, um, things like that, then put you know an extra 10% um, there, what I like to do is I like to put that 10% and on my 10% short term savings, if I'm not saving up to go to a holiday or anything, I'll use that and keep building that up. So just in case of a new investment opportunity comes in, I will then put it onto a new investment. That's how I like to go about it. Okay, so that's a that's a really good idea. And the last one, the last 10% is just your, your spending account. Okay, and that one can be used for whatever it is. So if you you know you want to go out and go to beer on a Friday night or get some new clothes or things that are highly discretionary and it's up to you whatever it is that you want to buy. Okay. So that's your last 10%. And this can repeat in that process. Now it doesn't necessarily need to work that way. So let's say for example if you live at home and you're probably thinking to yourself, well look, I'll work full time but I don't have as many expenses. I don't necessarily need to put 60% of my money onto my daily you know, expenses account. Then that's, then that's fine. Put even more onto your savings account. So make your savings 60% and make your daily expenses account 20% if you want to do that. And that's great, especially if you haven't bought property yet or anything like that. You can definitely accelerate your savings and that's really, really good. And I definitely encourage you to do that. But yeah, apart from that, you can definitely switch that up. But your other 20%, your short term, your short term savings, you know, and, and those can also be your savings to eventually invest it into a stock, especially if you follow on this channel, you'll, um, you'll definitely be able to learn how to do that. And on top of that, your other 10% can be just you spending your money on whatever you want. Anyways, I hope this uh, video has helped. 
If it did, please leave a like and subscribe. And apart from that, I'll speak to you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.